This is Techmodo, a Gizmodo series where we take a dive into some of the most recent tech news with some expert guests. This week, journalist Andrew Callahan from Channel 5 talks to me about how conspiracy theories and disinformation spiral out of control on the internet. Every day on the internet feels like walking through a burning hellscape. But why? Well, that's probably because social media is becoming a completely novel way for people to consume their news. That's problematic, as the Pew Research Center pointed out in a 2020 study that 18% of Americans self-reported using social media as a primary news source, and that these people are usually less likely to be knowledgeable about major news topics. Social media also increasingly creates echo chambers of ideology, where nefarious conspiracy theories and misinformation can thrive. I feel like there is no better person to explore this phenomenon with than Andrew Callahan, who is the mastermind behind Channel 5 with Andrew Callahan and formerly All Gas No Breaks. The man's a genius and has explored the worlds of QAnon supporters, flat earthers, alien truthers, and even the January 6th insurrection, and he is going to help me better understand how to become a far-right conspiracy theorist. Let's say I want to become kind of a far-right conspiracy leader. Are there platforms I should be targeting? In your experience, what have you kind of seen as, as you've dived into these people's lives? I mean, if you wanted to, like, on, on a tech level, I guess, like, Parler, BitChute, Rumble, Telegram is where most of that takes place. Okay. I mean, it used to take place on the surface net until, like, the mass deplatforming of people like Alex Jones took place. Right. You've watched these people on the internet and you've observed them in real life in your yeah. coverage. Do you see a difference in how people behave um, on the internet versus how they behave in real life? I mean, definitely people are more bold on the internet. Yeah. Probably less understanding, more likely to like say something to get like a digital reaction, to be more edgelordish, when yeah. in reality people are just more scared. I think right. the fear of like being rude to someone to their face would probably deter someone from like maybe saying the N-word out loud. What do you think is going on in people's brains where they want to believe conspiracy theories? Is it just as simple as the fact that they want to just feel like they're a part of a community? Yeah, I always say that if you've, if you've failed yourself or you've been failed by the world in some way, the conspiracy framework provides like a way out because oh, wow. it allows you to like posture yourself as this good person who did their best but just got fucked over right. and it helps you like spin the narrative in your favor. Right. So fail to yourself is if you, you know, if you stop going to work, if you just burned out, went to jail for tax evasion, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Conspiracy yeah. ideology can help you deal with that. Because yeah. you're like, I, I, I was one of the good ones. I, I wasn't breaking the law. These motherfuckers want to set me up. Mm -hmm. If they think about it on an even micro level like that, yeah. like going back to like schoolyard days. Right. And if you've been failed by the world, you know, like think about it, if you're like a coal miner who got laid off in West Virginia, it's very easy to be like, those Democrats are eating kids out there. Right. You know, it just makes you feel like you got fucked over by the worst people on, on earth and you're the best guy. Do you feel that fake news is something that is just an inherent byproduct of the internet and tech? Or do you think there's a way that tech can save us all from, from succumbing to a fake news? You know, news I've thought about what we can possibly do to like get out of this like post fact reality that we're in. And it's gonna take every single American upping their informational literacy. Yeah. There's nothing that the media or tech companies can do to, to help us be able to like distinguish between what's real and what's fake. Right. I mean, half the people that I, I interview at these rallies, they're showing me what they believe is like an official White House press release, but it looks like it was made by an eighth grader in Photoshop. <laughs> and they're, they're showing it to me like, this is the real election results. Yeah. And I'm like, I can actually see that there's typos on this. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I'm just like, at some point you gotta ask, like, what can big tech and mainstream media really do right. to help people become smarter? Right, right. I don't know. Yeah. We have to, we, they have to actually work to increase intelligence. Yeah, well, and I think big tech is probably cashing in on us Fuck not yeah. being literate in, Dude, in media. Big, yeah. It's big money all around. For sure. Corporate consolidation. The dystopia is here. Late stage capitalism. <laughs> all the buzzwords. This place rules December 30th. Yeah. <laughs> Social media is a breeding ground for misinformation and conspiracy theories. This isn't a secret, but what's the incentive to fix it? Sure, as Andrew mentioned, we the people should work on our media literacy, but the big tech companies behind these platforms are cashing in on our ignorance and miseducation. Don't believe me? Well, a recent lawsuit alleges that Facebook allowed incendiary posts to flourish on the platform in Ethiopian communities, which may have been the linchpin to an all-out civil war. Reminds me of the January 6th insurrection. How meta. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out other Gizmodo videos here on YouTube.